mentioned, my name is Anna, and I'm part of uh, Friends of Parkwood Forest Park. And actually, the image that was on the screen just a few minutes ago, um, that was taken in my backyard. So if you close your eyes, you can really pretend that you're in our community. Um, so today, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the artist, but uh, the colors, there's a lot of these uh, poles around the uh, community, and they represent that. Um, you know, any community, it's, it's composed of uh, all colors of the world, so that was a good uh, sculpture. Um, anyway, today I wanted to talk about um, a project that's called, um, that was part of Arts in the Parks. And if you're not familiar of, um, about what Arts in the Park is, um, it's a um, program that is sponsored by the City of Toronto through uh, taxpayers' money that is uh, uh, produced from construction sites uh, that are all around Toronto. And actually around this area, we've been having construction for the past maybe seven years or so. So all that money that uh, is collected from these construction sites actually gets and put, it's being placed back into the community to animate the community to make people happy and engaged. And uh, so Arts in the Parks um, is sponsored through this funding by uh, the City of Toronto and is managed by the Toronto Arts Foundation and Tor Toronto Arts Council in collaboration with Park People. And uh, Park People is a charity um, that is started in Toronto and now today is actually nationwide. They uh, help groups like ours, so community groups like ours, to animate parks. So uh, they help us uh, uh, put on events like park cleanups, um, um, arts in the parks, um, also um, community consultations. So let's say if there's another construction project going on in the community, they will help us uh, get the community together and talk about how can we revitalize the park, how can we add amenities to the park that would be beneficial to the entire community. So these are uh, very great resources to have for communities because not everyone knows how to reach out to all these resources. So park people, along with Toronto Arts uh, Council and Toronto Arts Foundation, work together to put together these arts in the parks uh, programs and Justine and uh, Ian, as part of Toaster Lab, uh, they were uh, granted um, a sp to come to our park to put on these events and um, artistic engagement. Um, and I think uh, the program started about four years ago, and every year uh, about uh, 33 artist groups get sponsored. Uh, to put on events in about 23 parks across Toronto. So during the summer period, you can go to any parks, it's all free of charge, so you can go and enjoy amazing artistic pro programs. So a Toaster Lab, um, we've, our park was actually selected uh, from the beginning, from the pilot, and uh, when it started four years ago, and every year we had the opportunity to work with artists uh, or different artist groups to put on events in our park. And I can tell you very honestly that working with Toaster Labs was an amazing experience because a lot of the times, and I think even during the session before, um, it was brought up the idea of consult consulting the community or consulting the indigenous groups or consulting the people that actually live in the in the area about what kind of programs you want to uh, uh, to want to put on, and um, Toaster Labs was amazing to work with because even before they actually applied for the funding, they came to us and they were like, "Hey, we have this idea." What would you like to do? Or do you have any ideas? Um, where should we locate it? What are the best times that you guys can uh, attend our events? Because we realize that you also have other events that you put on during the year. So it was a great collaboration from the sense of being included. So today I wanted to actually touch up on three amazing learnings that I actually got to experience in working with Toaster Lab. And first one I just mentioned is uh, really including the people from the start um, and uh, asking for a people's opinion. For example, um, everyone goes through their community walks from through their community. They understand um, what are some of the groups that are more isolated than others. Um, a lot of the community groups, for example, we have a WhatsApp group. 
where we um, there's about 500 people that are on this WhatsApp group, and e everyone helps each other. So if there's a person starting a new business or a person needing some uh, extra cash to rent out a place, everyone posts on this uh, WhatsApp group, and you have the whole community coming together to help each other. So um, when you're coming into the community and putting on an event, you may not know that these communities uh, virtual communities exist. So uh, being connected to someone in the community from the start, it's very important because you can get quick access to, the to a, group, a large group of people from the beginning. The second learning is that um, it was really nice how Toaster Lab, for example, they made it about the users. So the, uh, the event was a um, workshop series of four days for kids to learn how to use uh, VR technology and to put on a, um, a theater play and also to um, show community members their theater play. So over these two weeks, uh, two weekends, uh, they learned how to use the technology, uh, shot the movie, then they put it together, and then they taught, they showed it to the entire community. And uh, kids, the kids were doing everything, and they loved it. They came up with the idea what to shoot. They came up with uh, how to work together in, in groups. Um, they were the ones who were trusted with the technology. So I remember you and saying, oh, you guys, you have to be very careful. Don't put it in the sun. And you know, it's sometimes it's very scary to let a, like an eight-year-old you know, deal with all this high tech. But it was so great to get, to allow them to, um, to, f to fully trust them with the technology and also to fully trust them with explaining what they're doing. Um, and you, if you were there, you, you could see their smiles and how excited they were to show just random people passing by uh, what they did during that two week, um, during uh, that two weekend uh, workshop. Um, and then the third, um, the third uh, learning that uh, I drove from this experience was to really be flexible and uh, manage things as you go along. It, from my experience in uh, participating in community projects, stuff happens all the time. Um, and sometimes, no matter how much planning you do, um, it doesn't go your way. So for example, um, sometimes um, facilities may be closed. Um, sometimes uh, maybe not everyone shows up at the same time. You have to be flexible. The one learning that I really loved was, for example, a majority of the kids were about eight to 13, uh, maybe 12 years old. But there was one, one girl who was about uh, 16 years old. And maybe for us, because we're like, past that age, a 12-year-old with a 16-year-old, they look kind of the same, or they act the same. But actually, for them, it's a huge difference. So the 16-year-old wanted to be part of the group and felt included, but at the same time wanted to feel different. So you saw, when you looked at the whole workshop, you saw like the little kids working together and the 16-year-old uh, hanging in a tree, looking down on them, and then experiencing the event from a different perspective. But what I liked about Toaster Lab was that actually they catered the learning experience to, to both to include her as well. So they noticed that, you know what, this kid has, a different, has different needs or likes, enjoys different things. So they're like, okay, what do you want to do? So they, it was never a prescriptive event. Um, so I really enjoy that because um, you can see how uh, they're able to adapt uh, as they went along and actually made the whole experience much more um, enriching for everyone and inclusive. So that's about it. Thank you. So um, here's the youth <laughs> doing some warm-ups in the community center. And as you can see, like that looks just like a stick, but it is a 360 camera. Uh, that a child is holding there on a monopod. And we got some really incredible footage that the kids were like creative and really reckless with the cameras at the same time. But it also made for some like stunning uh, footage that we would have never been like bold enough to do, like dragging the camera through the grass, which created an incredible, like very animalistic experience. Um, and as Anna said that at the end of the workshop on the second weekend we had a pop-up VR cinema here and this is what she was talking about where the the kids actually were um, 
providing the instruction to the adults, to their family members and community members about how to use the Oculus Go headsets that they'd learned how to use, which was really fun. The movies themselves, the videos that the children produced were like a wildly varying quality, but that was completely immaterial. Anytime you watch like a home movie of your family or of your kids, you're going to love it no matter what. Um, so the kids had a great time. They learned about the material and the equipment, and they felt confident about sharing it with their family members too. And then at the end of the summer, um, we were able to create, uh, working with Andrew, a um, using the map tool as a web app, a um, basically like a web app version of uh, the videos that this, the kids had created. So we were able to provide um, headsets to the community. So versions of Google Cardboards um, to everyone for free, and we coincided it with a um, larger cinema event that was already scheduled for the park. So um, it was really exciting. It was a fun way to see the kids again. This was at the end of the summer. We did the workshop in July, and then this was in August that so we were finally able to share it. And here's, a, um, here's our friend Ian looking very pleased. <laughs> VR for the masses. Um, but everyone had a great time because there's a lot of 360 videos that you can watch if you only have this uh, cardboard. So it was really wonderful to get the funding to be able to share this. And this is a quick walkthrough of the web app here. So the videos that the kids created were then geolocated just within the park. And so um, you were able to locate, bloop, adventure story. And they had a lot of fun coming up with the stories for their, uh, for their shows, too. So it was, it was a really fun project, and we had such a great collaboration. And it was really wonderful to be able to be like present and open to what the community wanted. And it was, like at times, extremely challenging, as, as Anna said, because of the facilities and working with folks um, in, in an extremely hot uh, it was like a record-breaking heat wave on the first weekend, and the kids were troopers. They just wanted freezies, and it was fine. So, yeah. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.